Anyone who has studied the political landscape knows that the American government is slowly, creepingly sliding toward authoritarianism without basically little but a whimper from the American people. Uh, this is mainly because Americans are lazy, they're distracted, we emphasize intellectually lazy, distracted, and uh, don't have no idea what's in the American founding documents concerning their rights and their uh, duties as citizens. Uh, every study shows that. Uh, I've spoken to large groups of uh, lawyers and asked them to give me the five freedoms in the First Amendment. Never once can I find one person, even in a group of lawyers, who can actually stand up and give me the freedoms in the First Amendment. They just don't know it. So we are clueless. What this means, though, is the Constitution starts with those three beautiful words, we the people, we're supposed to hold the government accountable. But how can we hold the government accountable if we don't know uh, when they're overstepping their bounds, if we don't know our rights and we don't know the founding principles of our Constitution. Uh, history also very clearly illustrates that gov governments inevitably overstep their bounds. They will, they're, they're like a dog on a leash. The longer the leash, the farther the dog will go out. Unfortunately, the American people, because they do not know the basics of their government, have given this dog that we have today called our American government a very long and dangerous leash. The freedoms our forefathers fought and died for are based on uh, some basic principles. There are seven basic principles, and I'm going to go through those for you. Principles that basically very few Americans know, and some of them that have been greatly dissipated over time. The first principle, and this was the, an absolute maxim by those who wrote the Constitution, power corrupts. Uh, they knew that you couldn't trust a smiling president. They knew you couldn't trust a smiling congressman or even a smiling judge. They knew that power goes to people's heads. There's that phrase that power corrupts and absolute power corrupts absolutely. It's the first part of that phrase is important, power corrupts. James Madison, who wrote our Bill of Rights, says, all those in power ought to be mistrusted. So you cannot trust politicians. Absolutely. That's the first maximum our forefathers gave us. The second key principle is, is that governments exist primarily to secure our rights, not take them away. They're there to perpetuate the common good, to make sure that we have as many freedoms that we can have. And I'm not talking about protecting us from terrorists. It's protecting us from our local police, or our government that's uh, snooping at us through our, our surveillance state, watching us, collecting data on us. The government's supposed to be protecting us from all that. But the government today does not have that mindset. That's a key principle that we have lost. The third key principle is no one's above the law. This is called the rule of law. The president really is not any better than we are. He may have a fancy limousine. He may live in a fancy place called the White House. I'm, to be honest with you, I'm really concerned about how American presidents are viewed as kings. The American founding fathers, though, were, would be shocked today the, to see how we treat our presidents and our rulers, even the people in Congress. They're under the law. They're equal. All people are created equal. Remember that? That's in the Declaration of Independence. So the president's not really any better than us. And if they overstep the bounds just a bit, it's up to we, the people, to pull them back and say, you're under the rule of law, you're under our thumb, we're not under your thumb. Fourth key principle is what's called the separation of powers. That's why when you look in the Constitution, you have three co-equal branches of government. The executive, the judicial, and the legislative. Again, they were concerned that one branch of government or one person or one class of citizens would become absolutely power. And it goes back to the first principle, all power corrupts. So they separated the government to many different branches to make sure that power was never concentrated in one particular part of government. The fifth key principle is checks and balances. And what this is, is that you have the different branches of government and they're supposed to check each other. Congress has the right to pass laws. The president has a right to in limited circumstances, veto laws. And the judiciary has what's called judicial review. They're supposed to look at the, the laws that are passed by Congress or edicts or so-called executive orders, and they, they don't really do a good job of this today. What presidents are doing in terms of signing statements and executive orders, they're supposed to look at those and see if they square with the Constitution. But what the Founding Fathers really were concerned about was that Congress had the power of the tax. They thought Congress would be the most powerful branch. But as we see, we have a very corrupt and ineffective Congress. What's happened, and what the forefathers didn't see, and there was two things, is that power would become very excessively concentrated in the presidency, almost a dictatorial type power, and that the corporate influence, that's something they didn't foresee, but to be honest with you, Thomas Jefferson, who was a real visionary, saw it coming. Uh, that corporate powers through lobbying and paying off our representatives would have an immense power in government, a very corrupting influence. 
the sixth key principle the founders gave us was representation. There's no way all of us could directly participate in what's going on in the, f the huge federal bureaucracy. That's why we have what I will call a representative democracy, which means that we elect these people, these people that go up to Congress that often don't do a very good job. So what's the answer? Well, that's another thing the founders get. We can vote them out. That's another thing the founders gave us. We can actually vote these people out, and we should take that very, very seriously. If they do not listen to us, if we do, they don't listen to our emails, our phone calls, our rallies, then we vote them out. The last key principle, uh, and a very, very important one that's been lost in history, essentially, is federalism. And that is, is that uh, undergirding the Constitution is the concept that you have a federal government, not a national government, but a federal government. You have uh, states, uh, you have cities, local communities, and towns. So you have all these powers that are differentiated out. And the, what the founders believed was is that the best government was local government. And they knew that citizens could really have a tremendous impact on local government, things that most citizens don't do. How many of you watching this podcast actually go to a local city council meeting or a local school board meeting? You're upset, but you don't show up. They knew that's where you could have power. And that's why I like the maxim that I often throw out to people is, uh, act locally, think nationally. So what can you do? Learn your rights. Get a copy of these. I'll give you a free copy of one of these, these pamphlets on the Bill of Rights. And uh, get out there and take a stand for your rights. Stand up, protest, get involved. And I'm saying this, and I'm earnest about this. Do it today. Tomorrow may be too late.